big question here is what led to the earthquake in both Turkey and Syria? And, and when it comes to the subsequent strong aftershocks mm -hmm. that have occurred, well, let's bring in Dr. Shimon Vitowinski, he, a professor at the Department of Earth and Environment for Florida International University. Dr. Uh, Vitowinski, thank you for joining us. A, a tragic story to talk about these earthquakes. I mean, we see them globally every single day. But for you, what stands out about this quake which hit Turkey and, and Syria? I mean, that magnitude 7.8. We don't see those types of quakes there, right? Yes, we don't see them that often. Uh, the last earthquake that hit uh, Turkey, large magnitude earthquake that hit Turkey was uh, almost uh, 20, more than 20 years ago, it was in 1999, it was the uh, Izmit earthquake of magnitude 7.6, and the death toll over there was about uh, 70,000 people. Mm. Now, both uh, earthquakes, they lie on, on fault lines separating between tectonic plates. So they, uh, a, as a plate tectonic, they move very slowly. Uh, they accommodate a lot of stress and when the stress level reaches a certain uh, threshold, which cannot be sustained by the, the crust, uh, it's released by these uh, very strong earthquakes. So we do expect to have these uh, earthquakes. Sometimes they are, we have smaller earthquakes or moderate earthquakes. In this case, and like the Izmit earthquake, there were very large earthquakes, mean that this particular segment uh, didn't rupture for a long time, and a lot of stress accumulated along that uh, fault line. Time will do it, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and given you said that with the amount of stress that has been building up, we have been dealing with aftershocks. Is that still going to be a concern for the region? And if, for, if so, for how long? Well, the, the thing is, yeah, there was a, a, a nine hours after the, the big shock, there was another very large earthquake, magnitude 7.5, in some places, they say 7.7, .7, which is a huge earthquake. It means that the, this earthquake activated other faults. So when there is an earthquake, it releases a lot of stress, but it also load other fault segments. Uh, so in that case, there was a, a secondary fault, uh, which was also released, and uh, in, it, uh, by a very large earthquake, a magnitude 7.5 in that case, and all the other uh, earthquakes that uh, we hear, all the aftershocks are, are some of them also magnitude 6 and 5, which can cause uh, a lot of damage. Now, in general, uh, aftershocks tend to decay over time, which means that in the first few days we, have, we expect a large number of aftershocks, and after a week, less. And then uh, it depends on the magnitude of the earthquake and how much uh, stress is released. So as time goes by, the number of aftershocks uh, actually reduces. So we should expect in the next uh, couple of days a fair amount of aftershocks, maybe not as a high magnitude, uh, but in, over time, in, in weeks and months, that number will reduce. And, uh, and over here, we see people who study that see that we have in the background more earthquakes but uh, they're not as uh, devastating as uh, the ones that we had today. Uh, Dr. Vitowinski, when it comes to preparation, I mean, you have seconds to, to prepare for an earthquake and really to detect how strong it might be. Was there any sign before this quake struck Turkey and Syria? I, I, I mean, the video that I have seen, very little time to, to prepare for, for what Turkey was about to experience. Yes, actually, in, in that case, it was very close to the population center, and there's not much uh, time to prepare. Uh, in some locations, like in California, in Mexico, in Israel, they have what's called a early, early alert. Uh, and that can help when the, the earthquake hits uh, areas that um, a little bit farther away from the population center. And that can, because of the, the way the seismic wave propagates, uh, can give an, an alert of uh, several seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, which can uh, let people get out of the houses. But when the, the epicenter is so close to the population center, there's not much uh, we can do about it. I think the most disturbing thing, aside from just the devastation, is how that death toll has just been rising throughout the day. Uh, now the latest, I mean, we're approaching more than 3,000 uh, yeah. people. It, it's devastating. Dr. Shimon Vitowinski, thanks for shedding um, some light on, on this and the result of it. We, we wish the folks there the best in their recovery. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you very much.
I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.